Hi everybody, today we are talking about the stats models library because we are going to use it to perform a simple linear regression here in Python. But before we start, we want to import pandas and matplotlib, pandas because we are using um, data frames and matplotlib because we want to plot our data, our fitted data line and our re uh, regression residuals. So uh, the simple linear regression is where we have a dependent variable, the y variable, and we are explaining the variance in this uh, y variable using only one explanatory or independent variable, x. And how can we fit a linear or a line, a straight line between the points of y and the values of x? And we can use this by, um, by the OLS estimator, which minimizes the, um, the sum of uh, squared residuals from the estimated line to the points themselves. And we are going to find this OLS estimator in stats models, which means that we have to import our package. And this is our first step in our linear regression uh, method. And when you do this, you might get this warning uh, there is no problems, but um, this is a future warning, which means that um, there might come an update of the stats models, which um, in this case will deprecate um, this method, this pandas method. And this will uh, be removed from pandas in a future version. And instead of pandas in 64 index, we are going to use pandas index instead. So but in our case, this is nothing to worry about. Um, but if you are going to, uh, to make uh, some applications, uh, which uh, are going to be used in the future, and you currently use this method in pandas, then you have to uh, change your code, preferably, and use the new method instead. But now let's get back to uh, what we were supposed to do. And um, we have imported our stats models dot API. And this is for a cross sectional data methods. For example, the ordinary least squares. And uh, the second step is to provide some data. And here we are putting everything in a data frame. So we just define the key value pair, which is price on demand. So price would be our x variable and demand is our y variable. And we just use pandas dot data frame and pass in the values. And we can just check the data frame by printing it. And we see here that the two variables and their observations are put into this data frame. And each column is one variable here. And each row is an observation. And of course, we can plot this. So we use the uh, subplots method, and we pass in a figure size. And we put this into the figure object and the axis object. The figure object is just the whole figure. The axis object defines what we are actually putting into the figure. So here, on the axis objects, we use the scatter method. Uh, 
because we want to uh, have a scatter plot of price on the x axis and demand on the y axis. And our marker is S for square, and these squares should be green and the size should be set to 40. And we can just uh, run this so you see what we get. We get these green squares and we set the x limit from 0 to 60, from 0 here to 60, and we set the y limit of the uh, y axis uh, from 0 to 40. We also set the y label to demand and the x label to price, and each should have a font size of 14. And we see here that price and demand, they have this negative relationship. So if you have high prices, then the demand tend to be low. If you have low prices, the demand tend to be higher. Which means that we can try to explain the, um, the uh, variation in demand by use of the price. But we have to define our model. So we have to have a y variable, in, in our case demand, and we have to have an x variable, in our case price. Which means that we are, um, we are accessing uh, our data frame, and we are accessing the column called price from our data frame. And we put this into our x variable. And we do the same uh, with our y variable. We access the data frames demand column and put this into our y variable. And if we run this, then our x variable contains the uh, prices, our y variable contains our demands. And this has actually defined our model because now we have a y, y variable and we have an x variable. If we wanted the logarithm or the logarithm transform of these variables, we would have to do that in either this step or a previous step to add the logarithm of price to the DF data frame, for example. But here, we just take these uh, at face value and we do no transformation with the price or the demand. So we have gotten to the third step, which is to actually create the regression model, or we have created the regression model, but we have to fit it to, to the data. And if we are to have a, um, a, an intercept or a constant in our model, then we have to actually add that to the x uh, variable data structure. But that's quite easy because we can use the stats model dot add constant uh, function. And here we have our data, which is x. And the x plus the constant should be, um, should be um, um, stored in our x variable. So we, we are in effect just updating our data structure, the x, which contains the prices, with a constant as well. So if we run this and check out the constant or the, uh, the data frame, we see that our data frame contains a constant and the price. The constant is just a one for all observations. And if we run this again, we see that we do not add a second constant because this add constant method 
actually checks whether or not the data already contains a constant. If you have two constants, then you would have perfect multicollinearity between the variables. And that would be the topic of uh, a later video in econometrics. But also here we get a future warning. And in this case, in a future version of pandas, all arguments of concatenation, except for the argument objects, will be keyword only. And keyword arguments, we have talked about that in a previous lecture, but whenever you pass in an argument to a function, most often it's either a keyword argument or a positional argument. A keyword argument a, is um, defined by a keyword, in our case, data. So in this data, we put uh, our data structure, the X. So X is a data frame, which we just put into data. We could also have written it like this. So we would use the stats model dot add constant function, and we would just pass in a positional argument like this x. And then we can also run it, it would uh, generate the same output. But for future use, we should use a keyword argument. So that's the third uh, a, or uh, that's a prerequisite for the third step. But what we can do here is that now we can fit our model to get the, um, the uh, regression line. So to fit the model, we use the OLS, um, OLS um, uh, function in the stats modules uh, models uh, module. And this actually describes the model as an ordinary least squares model with uh, the dependent variable y and the explanatory or independent variables stored in x. And we can also fit this model by using the model.fit um, function, because model is an object which has a fit function. And OLS here, or um, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, result is stored in the uh, regression results um, a variable here, which also is an object. So it's good that we have gone through objects in a previous video. And here we also have the, if you, if we look at the model object, we see that this is actually a stats models dot regression dot linear model dot OLS object. And if we look at the results, this is actually a regression result wrapper. So this contains the regression results and uh, stores them for us to use. And the simplest way to get an overview of the regression results is to use the summary function. So then we can use the summary uh, method of the regression results um, object. And we get um, the, uh, the uh, regression output here in an HTML table. But oh, <laughs> even here, we get a war warning. But this is because we have a very small sam sample size of six. And for the uh, Omni or Omnibus normality test, 
um, we have to have at least eight observations because this is testing that we have drawn our observations from in normal distributions. So down here, we have not a number on this test. But we do have uh, our coefficients here. We have the intercept and we have the uh, slope here on price. And we have the R squared, the adjusted R squared. We have uh, the number of observations. We have information criteria, which you will learn about uh, late in your econometrics classes. But this table can also be represented or the summary can also be printed. So here we are printing the output, but then we get this uh, not HTML or formatted table, we just get this text. And actually, this test is uh, quite efficient uh, because you immediately know where to look. So for example, the coefficients, they are, are here in the middle and you get the standard errors, the T values, uh, the P values and the 95% confidence interval, for example. So here you can get uh, almost whatever you want from the, uh, the regression summary. But you can also uh, specify the model. You can fit the model and you can summarize the model in one line. So if we just uh, um, uh, run this, we see that uh, we uh, have already defined our y and x variable. So now we can just fit uh, or choose our method, which is OLS. We can fit the OLS uh, regression to our data and we can summarize the regression output. And uh, here we get the exact same regression output as previously. And uh, possibly we can print the, uh, well, control enter instead of just enter. And apparently we can print this as well and get this uh, quite um, efficient table. So uh, the regression results uh, object what kind of information does it contain? Uh, so we can use the dir reg res um, or the dir um, uh, function on the reg res object. And we see here that we actually get a lot of information about uh, what kind of um, and what kind of um, um, uh, information that uh, this object actually contains. For example, we can uh, get the um, p-value for the f-test and you recognize this from the, the, uh, the uh, uh, regression output table here that this is just the uh, p-value for the f-statistic. So 0 0.0337 should uh, also be, uh, be accessed by um, accessing uh, this uh, F underscore P value. So let's uh, just um, access some, some values here. For example, we have the params for parameters so this object reg res contains um, uh, in, in some information in um, in params, not p values, params, and we are going to look at that because the params they are just the 
coefficient parameters here uh, and the constant is 38 and the coefficient on price which is the slope is negative 0 0.54 and we can see here that if uh, we want the uh, constant term then we can um, access the params of the regress uh, object but we do not want all the parameters we just want the constant so remember that we called uh, or the constant is called const here so if you write what is here then you will get what is here and we we will do the same with price as well to get the parameter so if we go down here we can access the parameter for the constant in this um, uh, in the regression results and we put this number into alpha and then we print alpha and we get 38.03 which was exactly what we got in the the um, regression output here 38.03 and so on and we can do the same oops that was a bit too low we can actually do the same for the slope and uh, yeah, just one mention, this 38.03, this is the um, expected value of the y variable given uh, that the x variables uh, are set to zero. Uh, so given a zero price, we would expect the uh, demand to be a 38 and it might be more uh, sensible to look at our plot here so the regression line is a straight line and if we had set the price to zero here we would expect a demand of uh, about 38 so but we would actually expect the demand to fall with higher price so we can use our um, our um, uh, our uh, regression results object and its parameters to get the slope so this is how we would uh, expect the demand to change on average if uh, the x variable, the price, goes up by one unit. So here we are um, accessing the price part of the parameters and we put that in beta. And we run this and we get a result of negative 5, 4, which means that if we increase price by one unit we would expect demand to fall by half a unit so <clears throat> so if price goes up by let's say one dollar then we would expect demand to fall by uh, 0 0.54 units for example but these const and price can also be, or these parameters can also be accessed by their index. So we can uh, see that the um, the uh, constant term has an index of zero, and the um, the slope has an index of one, because we are storing the uh, the uh, the parameters from top to bottom. So this is index number zero, this is index number one, and we can just run this and get the same results. 
but we would like to have the, these strings because they tell us more. If you have uh, for loops, for example, to go through these uh, these parameters, then you could actually use the index to uh, to pass through. So uh, now we want to check the model fetch. This is the fourth and penultimate step. And to check the model fetch, we would first uh, check the R squared. So the R squared actually tells us uh, how much of the variation in our demand, the Y variable, can be explained by the variation in our X variable, which is price. And this actually, actually gives you a uh, percentage. So if we go up here to our table, we see that our R squared is 0.71, which means that about 71% of the variation in the Y variable can be explained by the covariation in the X variable. So uh, that would be the interpretation of the uh, R squared and the R squared is 0.71. So just think of it th think of it as 71%. And <clears throat> so this has a quite uh, logical interpretation, but we are not often using the R squared, we are using the adjusted R squared. So the adjusted R squared can be found in the table always. Um, and it's either uh, the same or lower as the R squared itself. And this adjusted R squared actually takes into account the model complexity and uh, how much data you have. So in this case, we do not have much data. We have a very simple model, but due to the lack of data, uh, the adjusted R squared is a lot less than the R squared. If you have a simple model and uh, a lot of data, uh, these uh, these uh, R squared measures, they will be basically equal. But in our case, we see that our adjusted R squared is quite low. But this enables us to actually uh, compare different models as long as they have the same Y variable. Okay, so that last part is quite important. They have to have the exact same Y variable without any transformations. Okay, so now we can go on to the last part of uh, our step in our um, regression model application because now we can actually apply the model for predictions, which is the most uh, or the the uh, the uh, the uh, or what you can say is that the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So this is when we are actually using our model. So um, if you are not using your model, what is the point of the first four steps? So now we can use the function predict to create predictions of our y variable, in our case demand, for a given price x. So now we can choose the x value and we can read from our model what we would expect y to be um, uh, given our model. So if we look at our data way up here, then if we have this reg regression line here and we, we uh, have uh, said to our boss, 
Well, if we set our price uh, of 30, we would expect our demand or the demand or our sales to be around 25. So that's how you can use the, um, the uh, or that's one way you can use the, the uh, regression output, but we are going to put everything into a plot. So here we can predict um, uh, the, uh, the uh, demand for um, a constant and a value of the x of 5. So the constant always is always 1, but here you also add the value for your x. So if the price is given or is set to 5, what would you predict the, uh, the demand to be? So if we just go up to our plot, if we have five, uh, a price of five, for example, euros or dollars uh, per, per, um, uh, per unit, then we would expect how much uh, demand. So then we use our predict function, which is a method of the uh, reg res or the regression res uh, result object. So we just um, type in this and we based on the model from here, the constant and the adjustment for price, we get a, um, a, um, an expected, let's see here, uh, we get an expected uh, demand of 35. And um, we can um, predict um, uh, the demand for all our x's, which means that we are predicting, based on the model, um, what uh, what our um, uh, or we are uh, getting the predicted demand for all our observed x values. So in this case, we get um, if we have no um, uh, no, if we have uh, a price equal to the uh, price of our first observation, we would expect from our model a, um, a uh, demand of 35. And for our uh, second observation on index number one, we would expect a demand of 29. And we can put all these into our data frame with data and we can put this into a column called predicted demand. So we are just making a new variable called predicted demand. This is the predicted demand based on our regression model. And then we print our data frame and look what we have. So the first observation had a price of five and a, um, an observed demand of 38, but based on our model, we would have expected a demand of 35.3. For the second observation, we would uh, we observed a price of 15, and we observed a demand of 22, but our, according to our model, we would expect in the long run, uh, to have a demand of 29 given this price. So we can plot this um, in a, a new plot and we are using the subplots. We have a scatter plot of price on the x-axis and demand on the y-axis. The label is um, 
the label is actual Y and we have square markers and they are green. Just as so the uh, observed values, they are in um, in green, just as in the first plot. But then we want to plot the predicted values. And we plot here the uh, price and the uh, predicted demand. And the label is the predicted Y and the points should be black and they should be circles and they um the uh, uh the face color should be red and the uh, edge should also be red um so this is the uh the label color color and of course we can set labels and we set y label equal to demand and we set the x label equal to price and we want there to uh, be a legend so the legend will contain the labels here which will enables uh, enable us to differ between the two series which we are um, are plotting so if we run this we see here that we have the price on the x-axis, we have the demand on, on the y-axis, and we have our actual observed uh, points here. Uh, and we have the regression line here with the predicted uh, demand given the observed price here. And you see here that we have missed um, uh, with this straight line. We cannot capture all these observations perfectly. So what OLS is doing, it's called ordinary least squares because it takes the least amount of squared residuals uh, between the observed um, um, the observed um, points here and the uh, predicted points by this line. So the residual is the observed demand for each point minus the predicted demand. So in for this point we have a negative residual. For this point, we have a positive residual. And this, uh, what OLS does is that it squares these residuals, it sums them up, and it um, chooses the intercept and the slope, which minimizes this sum. So we can add the, <coughs> the residual to our data frame and the residual is just the uh, uh, the observed demand minus the predicted demand and it's here so these would be squared and summed up and um, OLS minimizes that sum but this actually means that the sum of the squares themselves will sum up to zero but the squared results will sum up to something positive and we can actually add a, a plot of the residuals uh, or we can add some lines uh, with the residuals to our plot just to show you how it's done and uh, everything else is uh, basically equal to our previous um, uh, previous code but we are adding this part of the code and for x y1 and y2 in we use the zip function to get one and one observation 
or one and one line from price demand and predicted demand, then we can use these numbers, which are put into small x, y1 and y2. And we can uh, use the v lines um, uh, function uh, of the axis object. And this makes a vertical line and we specify the x position, which is where on this x axis the vertical line should be. And we specify the uh, starting point, the minimum um, of the line and the maximum of the line. So it should go from the observed demand to the predicted demand. And it should be gray, it should be dotted, and it has a label which is residual. And this would create some lines between the observed um, demand and the predicted demand. So if we run this, we can see here that we actually get um, the, uh, the the observed um, demand for different prices. We get the predicted demand for different prices, um, and we get the uh, re regression line, which gives us the predicted uh, demand for any price in this interval which is really powerful and we get the residual um, lines here so in the next video we are going to talk about uh, multiple regression where we have more than one x variable explaining the variation in the y variable